learners okay may i take this opportunity to welcome you to this video clip before we start at the bottom there there is a place written subscribe red so can you just press on that subscribe and then you can as well like it next to it and even write some comment which you can leave behind you are going to learn a lot from me from the slides that I've just prepared using my lesson notes. Thank you. And there we go. So this is Mr. Ngeti's Form 1 Physics lesson notes. And uh, these lesson notes are meant uh, for Kenya secondary schools. So we can go through them together as I take you through this lesson. So there is my TSC number and uh, the subject teacher is Mr. Ungeti King Martin, that is me. And uh, the class that I want to handle is the Form 1 class. May you feel welcome. So there is this quote which I normally like and I normally refer to it each and every time it normally encourages me so as to come up with the content that uh, my student will always be interested in. So the quote reads that when technology is implemented in the classroom, learning is brought to reality and students are empowered to create their own learning future. So these are quotes that uh, normally encourages me a lot because uh, being that we are in a different century where technology is highly uh, needed, especially when it comes to educational empowerment of our young generation. So that is me. My contact is there. Okay, and uh, the book that I've worked on is A Physics Mind is a Necessity in Technological Advancement. Uh, that's my motto. Okay, welcome. So for today's lesson, we are going to look at chapter one, which is uh, the introduction to physics. And introduction to physics is the first topic in Form 1, which is normally covered in Term 1 work. So because Form 1s normally report in the second week after the rest have opened in the first week, so most of their lessons normally begin in the third week, as the second week is normally meant for reporting. So therefore, we'll be concentrating on what normally takes place from week 3, that is Lesson 1. So the objective of this lesson are highlighted there. So by the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to, number one, state the three branches of science. Number two, define the term physics. Number three, explain what the study of physics entails and various phenomena on which physics explain. And then number four, state the importance of studying physics as a subject. So those are some of the objectives that I as a teacher I must achieve at the end of uh, this uh, lesson. Okay, so let's start with the physics. So as you all know that uh, in primary school science was a bit broad as compared to in secondary school where science has been divided into three areas. So physics is one of the branch of the science, though science is divided into three main branches at the secondary level. So the first branch is physics, which I will be taking you through. Then the second branch is chemistry, which will be done with a different teacher. And then we also have biology, which will also be done with uh, 
a different teacher. So I'll majorly concentrate on physics and uh, I'll start by looking at definition of physics. So under the definition of physics, uh, we are supposed to come up with what does the study of physics entails. So generally, physics is defined as the study of matter and its relation to energy. So that's the main definition of physics in that physics goes ahead to study matter and as we all know that matter is anything that surrounds us and also has got mass and then it also go ahead to look at the, the relationship that exists between this matter and energy. Energy simply means the ability to do work just like the way you defined it at uh, the primary level. Okay, so in most cases you'll find that there are various phenomena which uh, physics can explain and uh, may enable us to understand some of these phenomena. So the first phenomenon is the falling of bodies towards the ground. So when bodies fall towards the ground, this can be explained using this subject which we call physics. In most cases, if you throw anything upwards, like for instance, if you take a stone and then you throw it upwards, okay, the stone will always come downwards. So through the study of physics, you will be able to understand the reason as to why when a stone is thrown upward, it normally comes downward. And in most cases, we normally know that this one is always as a result of the gravitational force that normally pulls objects towards the center of the earth. And that is specifically the earth's gravitational, gravitational force. Then the second aspect uh, phenomena is the rising up of liquid through a drinking straw. So you always find that when liquid is placed in a container and then we have a straw, at times we may need to take the liquid or, or for example a soda. So we can as well use physics so as to explain to us why when uh, you use a straw in taking soda, the liquid normally rises towards our mouth. And uh, this one will be, look at, will be looked at under atmospheric pressure because it is the one that is normally responsible for the rising up of uh, the liquid up the, the straw. Then the second phenomenon, the third phenomenon is seasonal occurrence of tides. So at the sea, you'll always find that we normally have tides. So through the study of physics, we'll also be able to understand why these tides normally occur seasonally. Then the fourth one is a plastic pen. When rubbed against dry fur or hair, will always pick small pieces of, of paper. This is something that you can even try. Just cut some small pieces of paper. Okay. Now once you've cut the small pieces of paper, take your pen that you're using because you are supposed to have a pen and a paper when you're undertaking this lesson. Okay, rub that piece of, uh, that, that pen on your air. Okay, just rub it. Now bring it closer to the small pieces of paper. Now what do you observe? So you always fi find that this uh, pen attracts the small pieces of paper. So that one tells us that there are some forces that are associated, especially when the pen is rubbed. So it means it's charged, it acquires some of the charges, so that when it brought closer to the small pieces of paper, the small pieces of paper gets attracted. So this one is mainly explained in physics. Then the fifth phenomenon is crackling sound, which is normally heard when a nylon cloth is removed from our body. So at times you may remove a nylon cloth from your body and when you remove it, you always hear some crackling sound, okay? Uh, or you may even end up even seeing some sparks, especially when you remove uh, such kind of clothes in darkness. So this is also being explained in physics under electrostatic. So 
we can as well look at some of the ways of studying physics in secondary school. So there are various ways through which physics is being studied under secondary level and uh, one of the way through which physics is being studied in secondary school is measurement of quantities and collection of data. So you'll find that when students normally go to the laboratory, they normally measure some of the quantities like liquids, okay, uh, chemicals, and even uh, certain masses. So you'll find that through these, they also acquire some of the skills. So one of the ways through which physics is learned is through measurements. And then once they have measured a certain value using an instrument, let's say maybe using a meter rule or maybe measuring the, uh, uh, the, the length of a, of a field using a surveyor step measure and so on, they are supposed to indicate the measurement in maybe a notebook. So that one is now what we call collection of collection of data. So that is also one of the ways through which physics is being studied. Then the second way through which physics is being studied is uh, by drawing and testing of hypotheses. So this drawing and testing of a hypothesis can be, can be done through experiments where we have experiments being carried out within the laboratory and as you carry out this experiment there are some observations that you're supposed to make as a student. So that is also one of the ways through which uh, uh, physics is being studied in high school. Then the last bit is establishment of laws and principles. So you'll find that laws can be established and principles can also be established at the same time based on the experiment that has been performed. So if the experiment is such that there's always a way in which the values that are obtained obey a certain relationship, then we can come up with a law and also even come up with some principles behind them. So let's also look at the importance of studying physics as a subject. Now you are a form one and you may also be interested as to why you should study physics at the secondary school. So in most cases I normally encourage my students to take physics because it's one of the noble subjects and it's one of the it's the only subject that has got so many careers, almost over a hundred careers that fall under the study of physics. Now, the first importance of studying physics is that physics help us to understand the wonders of nature. So, some of the wonders of nature include the eclipse, the lightning, the rainbow, the mirages, and even others. Now, when you, when I talk of wonders of nature, these are things that we are born and we just found them there happening. So at times, physics may help us to understand them. Why is it that the solar eclipse occurs or the moon eclipse occurs? When does it occur? Lightning. What causes lightning? What causes rainbow? What causes mirages? Okay. So you'll always find that like the eclipse of the sun will always occur, especially when uh, there's a, when, when we have the, the sun as the earth coming in between or the moon coming in between we experience some some eclipse and that one will be elaborated for you and then we also have lightning and lightning also can also be explained in electrostatic uh, we have rainbow mirages all this can be explained under the refraction of light which is covered in form three so through the study of physics we'll be able to understand such wonders of nature then the next importance of studying physics is the point number two. In point number two, we have through the study of physics, various forms of energy available available in the universe are harnessed for the good use of mankind. Examples are geothermal, hydroelectricity, radio waves, microwaves, and fiber optics. So you'll find that when we study physics, there are some forms of energy which we can tap. And some of these forms of energy have, have been highlighted here, like the geothermal. This one is normally tapped from the ground, so where we produce electricity from steam, hot steam that are being collected together so as to drive the turbines. Then we also have the hydroelectricity, the one that we normally use in our home, which we, we, we normally refer to it as the alternating current. So you'll find that this hydroelectricity, from the word hydroelectricity, it means it is an electricity that, that is being produced from water. So when water turns the turbines, 
especially within the waterfalls. So you always find that this one can also be converted into electricity, which we normally use in our homes. Then we have got the radio waves, the radio waves, the microwaves. So these are majorly being used in communication. And we also have the fiber optics that are also being used in communication and also other applications. So we'll also be looking at this uh, in physics. So through the study of physics, you'll find that these forms of energy that are being tapped uh, can be used so as to help the mankind. Okay. And then another thing that I also like to add is that the microwaves, remember, they, they are the waves that we also even use in our microwaves at home because they have got energy that can be used to heat food and also make it warm and so on. Okay. Then we can look at another importance of, uh, of uh, studying uh, uh, physics. So the next importance is pursuing career related to the subject. So just like they had said when I started that physics is one of the only, it's one of the subjects that has got the highest number of career. And in fact, there are over a hundred. And in fact, we list them as we go on. So in one way or the other, physics can help you to develop your career so that by the end of the high school level, you'll be able to pursue it without any problem. So therefore, you'll be able to develop and also be marketable when it comes to the field of work. Therefore, physics is a very, very important subject. Then another thing is that it helps in development of technology. Just look around you. You'll always, find, you'll always see the application of physics in that through the study of physics, we come up with uh, various uh, things which we normally use in our daily lives. Like whatever I'm using, the machine that I'm using here is as a result of the study of physics. You can see how technology is being brought into learning and it makes learning to be quite uh, important and it's like you feel you have that interest of continuing and continuing again as compared to just rather talking with chalks on the board and so on. And then apart from uh, in learning sector, we can say that physics has also helped, especially when it comes to, to to our homes. So in our homes, we have like the smart TVs, the, the smartphones, we have electronics, gadgets, which also are all application of physics because some of them use the semiconductors, uh, they, they use the diodes, you see that. So these are all applications of applications of physics. So another thing is that physics helps in industrial development of the nation. And in most industry, you'll find that there are some of the machines that are normally being used, which have replaced the human labor. So you find that these machines are very fast and they all require the knowledge of physics for them to be operated and at the same time for them to be, uh, to be made. So this has greatly improved the industrial sector, sectors as the level of production has increased within a short period of time. Then physics can also explain some of the following that I'm going to highlight. So the first one is that when we have a clean shaven athlete who is participating in 100 meter race. So in most cases, you'll find that these athletes, they normally have their hair cleaned. In fact, they normally sh shave their hair clean. So you may wonder why is it that they normally shave their hair clean? So the reason is because or so as to reduce friction between the hair and the air that moves. So you always find that there's always this friction which we call the viscous drag that takes place between air and object. So these people, they normally shave so as to reduce this friction. And you find that when this friction is reduced, therefore there will be no more much resistance when they are, they are in motion. So that's uh, also one of the thing that physics can explain. Then physics can also explain the reason why a car race driver moving along a slippery surface in order to crease safely. You'll always find that this car driver will always uh, try to use big treads or maybe chain on the tires. So the reason is because the, uh, the driver wants to increase friction because on a slippery surface you'll find that it's always so hard for you to even in movement it becomes quite difficult. So motion normally require a surface that has got increased, increased friction. So 
in physics, just like in all other sciences, uh, theories are normally verified and findings are normally given in a scientific report. So there's this thing we call the scientific report. Now let's say you've conducted an experiment within the laboratory. At times you may be required to come up with a report and uh, in most cases this one is normally done in science and engineering fair where we do the report writing and uh, we also do the presentation. So you'll find that there are some of the components of a scientific report that make it be called uh, a report. So what are some of these components of a scientific report? They include the following. One, a scientific report must have a title or a heading. Okay, So there must be a heading of the project that you are undertaking or maybe a report that you are writing. And then apart from heading, we have the aims, the objective of that scientific report. What were you doing? What was your main objective? Okay, What is it that you are investigating? That is under objective. Then we have got the hypothesis. The hypothesis that is supposed to be tested. Okay, so we have the variables. So we normally have variables that you are going to vary the quantities. Okay, if it is for electricity, maybe you want to vary the voltage versus the current. Then we have got the apparatus. The apparatus that you are going to use. Okay, you are going to use maybe a voltmeter for electricity, an ammeter for electricity, and so on. Then we have the procedures, which are the guidelines. So these procedures will guide you now you are going to conduct uh, uh, your experiment. Okay. Then we have the diagrams that are also involved. Remember it's the diagram that tells us how our experiment is supposed to be arranged. And then once you've done an experiment, there are observations. So this observation must also be included within the scientific report. Now once you've done that, there are some data that you normally collect which need to be analyzed. So that's why we have analysis of the results that must also be there. Then we have interpretation. You are supposed to interpret the results that you have analyzed. You are supposed to interpret so that when you are presenting, it comes clear to you, the, your listeners. And then we have conclusions. So you have to draw conclusions and you have also to point some sources of errors, evaluations, and also some improvements that may occur. Then during this report writing and also experimentation. There are some of the scientific skills that you normally learn, especially in secondary school. So you may also be asked to name some of them and you may also know to know, you, you may also need to know some of these scientific skills that you'll be gaining. So through uh, observations you gain uh, skills on observation. You also gain skills on measuring because you'll be measuring in the laboratory as you do experiments. You also gain skills on recording. You'll be recording your data. You also gain uh, skills on analysis. You'll have to analyze your data. Then manipulative. Uh, this is whereby you'll be holding uh, uh, some of the apparatus that you'll be using to conduct experiments and so on. Then you'll be doing the reporting, report writing. Okay. Then presentation, you're supposed to present it before the class, maybe, or maybe for a presentation at the sub-county or county level. Then we have the cooperation. So there is need for cooperation among learners. You have to cooperate together. So that one will build some kind of cooperation in you. And then perseverance. So you need to persevere. So this one also brings in the idea of tolerance and responsibility also. You become quite responsible person. Because in each and every experiment that you'll be doing, it needs responsibility. You have to be responsible. Okay, you don't just lit around, you do things alter-skeletally. So you have to be very responsible. Then, the scientific skills that are learned in school may include uh, the following. So there are some of the scientific skills that are normally learned in school. And some of them include one. Select and use appropriate instrument to carry out measurement in a physical environment. So you'll find that there are some instruments that you're supposed to know how to use them. Like for example, a meter rule. A meter rule can be used in measurement, in, in measuring with especially for a locker or, or maybe short distances. I'll not go for a severe tape measure if I want to measure a very short distances. So one of the skills that you learn is now how to select an appropriate instrument and at the same time not only just select it but at the same time you're supposed to be able to, to use it so as to carry out some of the exper 
some of the experiments. Then the next scientific uh, skill that you are also supposed to to you learn is that you'll be able to use knowledge that you have acquired to discover and to explain the order of your physical environment. How is your physical environment arranged? Okay, you'll be able to even explain some of the things that you're seeing around you. So that is also a skill that you have acquired. Then the you will also be able to use the acquired knowledge in conservation and management of environment. Remember, management and conservation environment is a global aspect, and in fact, it's uh, one of the things that one of the major concern, especially in Africa, where even we have meetings that are being held on the same. So, when you are studying physics, you should also be able to conserve and also to manage uh, the resources that we have within our location then you are also supposed to apply the principle of physics and acquired skills so as to construct appropriate scientific devices from their variable uh, resources so we don't just learn physics for the sake of knowledge and also for the sake of just passing exams so we are supposed to apply whatever we learned so as to come up with uh, some of the devices that can be helpful and these devices should be such that they do not con they, they do not consume a lot of resources we should try as much as possible so as to use the lim limited resources that that we have then the next point is that it develop capacity for critical thinking in solving problems in any situation in fact most students who undertake physics they normally have uh, some kind of critical thoughts that they can make even the kind of decision that they normally make are decisions that are quite good as compared to those who don't take physics so you'll find that they always reason out facts okay they normally bring things on table and in fact most of them uh, they, they cannot just be cheated okay because they think critically then we have contributed to technological and industrial development of the nation so in most cases you'll find that the study of physics has really greatly improved technology and uh, as i had ex explained earlier on and we are also going to look at some of the sectors that physics has contributed greatly okay and even industrial development of a nation so you'll find that that's why even the government especially the government of kenya really encourages uh, students who are furthering their education in uh, uh, in industrials and technological areas and also in physics and sciences because these are some of the things that brings uh, technological and industrial development of of the nation then the next point is that observe general safety precaution in all aspects of life remember in physics there are some of the rules that are laid down especially even when you're going for an experiment in the laboratory so through the observation of these rules they'll be able to even come up with some general safety precautions in all aspects of life okay so like for example in a home a homestead you may not find a physics students taking a nail and then and then uh, inserting that nail into the socket uh, okay so because that one may result into the student being shocked and all that and you find that all these things are being studied in physics there are also even the first aid measures that a physics student is supposed to take so all these ones are also studied in in physics then it also helps us especially where to appreciate and explain the role of physics in promoting health in the society so you'll find that we we appreciate and we even explain uh, its role especially when it comes to health matters within our people then acquire and demonstrate a sense of honesty and high integrity in all aspects of physics and life in general so the level of integrity is of much concern when it comes to office work and even our daily life we normally require people who have got high integrity. So through the study of physics, there's this integrity that is normally normally developed and honest. Then acquire positive attitude towards uh, physics. So we can also acquire that positive attitude towards physics, especially when we go through it. And uh, this one has greatly improved uh, the performance of students who normally take who take physics because they have that positive attitude towards the subject and they will also like to come up with uh, uh, various knowledge that will help them better on in their life then acquire adequate knowledge in physics for further education or training yes just like they say that there are various careers 
in line with physics and that's why when a student normally drop this subject i normally feel for that student because at times you find that uh, the student limits his uh, career later career so the student may end up remaining with few careers as compared to those students who undertake physics because they have a wider variety of careers that they can select from and there are also other careers that you cannot do if you do you have not done physics so the next thing is uh, an assignment uh, which uh, normally comes towards the tail end of uh, the lesson so uh, the first question that I want to give you is state the three branches of science uh, so I require you to state the three branches of science just like the way I discussed them and I know you'll be able to state that then number two you should be able to define the term physics you should be able to define the term physics then number three okay the other one was number two number three explain what the study of physics entails and various phenomena on which physics explain i hope i've gone through all this it's just a, a reminder and also to guide you on various areas that you're supposed to concentrate on and then lastly state the importance of studying physics as as a subject so the last question there is you are required to state the importance of studying physics as as a subject otherwise we have come to the end of the lesson okay i think you have uh really enjoyed the session and uh, there are so many concepts that you have learned uh, which have been well explained so before you leave the video clip ensure that you have subscribed there at the bottom there's a red button just press the word subscribe and at the same time you can like the video clip there at the bottom you can as well write a comment on that place for comment otherwise thank you and enjoy watching and listening to the next videos that will follow thank you